These people are amongst the greatest quiz players in Britain. Together, they make up the Eggheads, arguably the most formidable quiz team in the country. The question is, can they be beaten? Welcome to Eggheads, the show where a team of five quiz challengers pit their wits against possibly the greatest quiz team in Britain. They are the Eggheads. You ready to bang one over the net, Eggheads? Absolutely. Always. Yes. OK, take it on our quiz champions today are the Drop Shots. Now, this team of friends are all members of Badminton Social, which is a club based in Nottingham that promotes sport in the lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender communities. So let's meet them. Hi, I'm Scott and I'm a performance consultant. Hi, I'm Andrew and I'm an architectural assistant. Hi, I'm Martin and I'm a global brand manager. Hi, I'm Connor and I'm an office manager for a civil engineering company. Hi, I'm Stuart and I'm a supplier liaison. So Scott and team, hello. hello. Hi, Jeremy. Great to see you here. And, and Scott, tell us about the, uh, the Badminton Social. Yeah, so we're a, um, a, a team of badminton players that, that play in Nottingham, specifically designed to uh, um, encourage people that are lesbian, gay, bisexual or transgender, just to really promote inclusion, uh, just to you know, build their own social skills, but also um, any kind of sporting fitness and, and stuff like that. Sure, and, and why badminton? Well, I, I do like badminton myself, so I think I know the answer, but it, what is it about badminton? I think fitness, first of all. Um, we like to, to keep out of the cold. That's always a good one in, in, <laughs> the, in the Indoors, winter. yes. Yeah. Um, but, you know, just that level of competition, but I guess more than that, it's that, it's that opportunity to really connect as almost a community, actually, within Nottingham. And, and you've been in a league, I understand? Yes, we've started a league um, around September time last year, so... So it's getting serious? Absolutely, yeah, so we're, we're starting to drive that forward as well, so it's good. Is the quizzing as serious as the badminton? It's getting there. Yeah, right. we're, confident. Okay. we're confident. You can you can bluff it with these. That's fine. <laughs> so there's That's been, the plan. Uh, there has been some quizzing. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, good luck, challengers. Every day there is a thousand pounds worth of cash up for grabs for our challenging team. If they fail to defeat the eggheads, that prize money rolls over to the next show. So drop shots. The eggheads are on a roll. They've won the last 15 games, oh, wow. which means there's sixteen thousand pounds. Okay, for you to win then. if you're successful. How's that? That would buy that's quite right, a few yeah, shuttlecocks. Right. Yeah. Okay. So the first head-to-head -head battle is on the subject of music. So one of you against either Beth, Kevin, Chris, Barry, or Dave. So music, guys, what are we thinking? Uh, Martin. 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 Yeah. And I will go against Beth, if that's, if that's OK. OK, so Martin, our global brand manager, taking on Beth on music. First up, good luck. Thank you. Please, to ensure there's no conferring, both take your positions in our famous question room. I know you love your music, Martin. I do, yes. I'm a big fan of concerts and I'm um, going to see lots of um, different celebrities perform. Do you do uh, the other end of music? Do you do opera and classical and that kind of thing? Um, I've been to some. Um, I would say that I perhaps don't enjoy those as much as um, popular artists, but um, I, I, I try and get to see a variety. All right, well, good luck, Martin, against Beth. And you're going in on music. Would you like to go first or second? Um, I will go first, please. So, here is your first question. What is the first line of the Beatles song, Yellow Submarine? In the town where I was born, standing in the dock at Southampton, or I read the news today, oh boy. OK, I'm actually not a huge fan of the Beatles, um, but I do know the answer to this one, I, I hope. In the town where I was born. That's it, in the town where I was born. And I think it's Ringo singing. Beth, your question. Which of these singers was a member of the girl group Destiny's Child? Rihanna, Beyonce or Lady Gaga? Uh, well, as far as I'm aware, Rihanna and Lady Gaga have always been solo artists, but Beyonce was with Destiny's Child. Beyonce is right. Martin, your question. Who was the drummer for the rock band Led Zeppelin? Robert Plant, Jimmy Page or John Bonham? OK, I know the names. I know Robert Plant and Jimmy Page, but I thought both of those were guitarists. So this is a total guess. I'm going to go at John Bonham. Well, you've, you've basically got the band in front of you there, the band Led Zeppelin. So Plant is the vocalist, Page is the guitarist. John Bonham, you're absolutely right, was on the drums. Hang on, who played the bass then, Dave? John Paul Jones. John Paul Jones. Beth, the singer and composer Randy Newman is best known for playing which musical instrument? Trumpet, 
piano or clarinet. Well, thinking about his, uh, his compositions, he's a film composer well known for doing a Toy Story, I think. Um, and I can hear a piano playing in the background, so I think he plays the piano. Piano is correct. Martin, your third question can be crucial. What is the meaning of the title of Leon Cavallio's opera, Pagliacci? Does it mean the assassins, the women, or the clowns? OK, now, I actually lived in Italy for six months. However, I didn't learn a lot of Italian whilst I was out there. So, again, I absolutely don't know the answer to this. It's a total guess. And Connor would always tell me, if I'm unsure, go down the middle. So I'm going to say the women. Who's advising you to go down the middle? Connor. <laughs> oh, Connor. <laughs> oh, oh, Connor. Dear. <laughs> oh, dear. Judith always goes down the right. It's the clowns. Oh. Pagliacci, I guess the women in Ita Italian might be one we would recognise, a word we'd recognise. What would that be, I guess? Donna. La Donna. Well, le, le Donne. Le Donne. Donne be an e in the plural. Yeah, it's not the women, it's the clowns. OK, Beth, you have a chance to take the round with this. Werewolves of London is a song by which American artist? Warren Zevon, Leonard Cohen or Bob Seger? Hmm. I don't think it's really Leonard Cohen's style or Bob Seger's. I'm wondering whether I've got Bob Seger muddled up with somebody else, but I don't think I have. So it's got to be Warren Zevon. Warren Zevon is your answer. He's got a very famous first line. This saw a werewolf with a Chinese menu in his hand walking through the streets of Soho in the rain. He's heard about a place called Li Hu Fook's going to get himself a dish of beef chow mein. Warren <laughs> Zevon is the right answer. Well done, Beth. You've done it. You're through to the final. Sorry, Martin, beaten by our egghead there. And as a result, you've been knocked out. But it's early. Please come back to us. We'll play on. So the drop shots have, have hit the net with one of their shots. They've lost a brain. The eggheads are still all there, still smashing it. And the next subject is geography. Who wants this? Geography. I think oh, with geography, we're gonna go we've, we've said... Am I going to go for it? Yeah. Andrew, yeah. Andrew, you're up for it. OK, who am I going to take on? What about the eggheads? What we think? Andrew, yeah. OK. Yeah, Andrew. Yeah, Andrew Anyone geography. but Beth. Dave, Barry, Barry Chris or Kevin? So Chris? Chris. What do you think? Yeah? Yeah. Take, take, take on Chris. Chris, OK, last foreign trip, Chris? Well, I've been around a bit. OK. <laughs> I've set foot on two continents, put it that way. All right. Well, including this one? Including Europe, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew from the Drop Shots versus Chris from the Eggheads. To ensure there's no conferring, please take your positions in our famous question room. You're a keen cyclist, Andrew, I gather? Yeah, that's right. So you've done a 200-mile ride from Newcastle? Yeah, that's right. Um, just wanted a bit more... I do a daily commute, but just wanted to do a bit of a longer-distance ride. And, um, yeah, did a five-day trip uh, overland up to Edinburgh in time for the Fringe Festival. But we, we had to leave. We didn't get a chance to stay, but it was... Uh... How was that? What was the route like from Newcastle to Edinburgh? It sounds great. It's beautiful, yeah. It's a recognised um, Sustrans cycle route, um, and it does the Castles and Coasts tour. So you go past Bamber and all the other castles up around Northumberland. Really beautiful. Do you fancy that, Chris? Well, I've not ridden a bike since I was 16. Because in 1964, I had the original funky moped, of course. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, these, these days, bikes have got a bit of uh, something about them. Yeah, it might be something to, something to try in my old age. So we're on geography, Andrew. Would you like to go first or second? I'll go first, please. OK, good luck. South Shields is a town and port in which part of England? Northeast, southwest, or southeast? Well, funnily enough, that was somewhere we cycled through from uh, Newcastle, so. That's going to have to be in the northeast. It is the northeast. You're quite right, and it would have been what on your route. That's right. So it's just on the way out to the coast and, and up, up the east coast there. Ah, yeah, good. Chris, which of these cities is located on the east coast of the USA? Chris, San Francisco, Boston, or Seattle? That is Boston, Jeremy. Boston, Massachusetts. Boston is right. Was America the other continent that you'd, you'd set foot on? It was indeed actually flew into Logan Airport, Boston. Andrew, your question. The most direct sea route between Perth in Australia and Karachi in Pakistan crosses which ocean? Atlantic Ocean, Pacific Ocean or Indian Ocean? Um, well, Perth in Western Australia, so it's not going to be the Pacific. It's got to be Indian Ocean. Indian Ocean is correct. Well done. Chris, your second, to catch up. 
The Scottish town of Aviemore is a famous centre for which sport? Rugby union, skiing or cricket? Well, Aviemore, it's skiing. Skiing is correct. We're trucking along quite handily here. Third question can be crucial, Andrew. As Martin knows, here we go. <laughs> Greek land east and Greek land west are areas in which African country? Tunisia, Nigeria or South Africa? So I'll spell it for you. G-R-A-Q-U-A-L-A-N-D. So Greek land east, Greek land west. Uh, I'm not strong on African geography, I must admit. Greek. I'm wondering, I'm wondering whether it's South Africa. I'll go with South Africa, please. South Africa is correct. Yes. Well done, well played. Three out of three, nicely done. OK, Chris, to stay in. Monterey is a city in the northeast of which country? Monterey. Brazil, Colombia or Mexico? There's a Monterey in California. Um, it's in the northeast of uh, Mexico. Yes, it is in the northeast of Mexico. Well done. So three each to you. We go to sudden death now, Andrew. It gets a bit harder. I don't give you alternative options. Are you ready? Yes. On which continent is the country of Togo located? Togo. T-O-G-O. I think Togo's out in the Pacific. So that's either going to be Asia or Australasia. Uh, I want to say Australasia. Australasia. No. Now, I'm just thinking, have we got confused? Is there a Tongo in the Pacific? Tonga. Tonga. Tonga is in the Pacific. Togo is in Africa. Oh, is it? Oh. So the answer we wanted was Africa. Chris has the chance to take the geography round with this question. Often abbreviated to IDL, what is the full name, Chris, of the imaginary line of navigation on the surface of the Earth, demarcating the change of one calendar day to the next? That is the International Date Line. International Date Line is the right answer. You've taken the round. Sorry, Andrew, knocked out there by Chris. Yeah. Return to us, please. Both of you rejoin your teams and we will play round three. The drop shots have lost a second brain, so they're two down now in the final round. The eggheads are still all there. So now is the moment, gentlemen, to knock one out. And it's film and TV. Who would like this? Film and TV. We've got one thing here. Connor? Is that on yours? Um, really? I'm yeah. happy to take film and TV. Give it a go. Yeah. 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 Okay, Connor. Against which egghead? And you can have either Kevin, Barry, or Dave. Do we want Do to take out? Do you want to take on Kevin? Do you want to try Kevin? Should we give Kevin a go? Yeah. I'll give Kevin a go, please. I think it's wise to try. <laughs> <laughs> Hurl yourself at him. See what happens. <laughs> Connor from the drop shots is going to try and smash Kevin over Sounds the net. Sounds a bit drastic. <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes it needs to be drastic, Kevin. To ensure there's no conferring, please take your positions. Well, Kevin, if you win this, it will be your 699th victory in that booth. <laughs> oh, well. OK. Well, that's a hit. That's, that's something. So we, I don't know what happens when we have 700, we get streamers coming from the ceiling and stuff. Open to money as well, if that... <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that's out the question. Ah. Connie, you have an addiction to Marmite. Yeah, I actually had to stop purchasing the, uh, the squeezy bottles uh, because it was just too easy. <laughs> it's, uh, I've got a bad habit of getting a block of cheese as well and covering the cheese and just knocking it back. Right. Is that your only hobby or...? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I play golf as well as playing badminton with the lads. And after a big victory on the golf course, you'd, you'd knock back a few tubes of Marmite. Yeah, or a pint. <laughs> well, I'm sure it's doing you no harm, Connor. Good luck here. Film and TV, Connor, would you like to go first or second? I'd like to go first, please, Jeremy. And here's your first. Martin Roberts and Lucy Alexander have presented which TV show? Homes Under the Hammer, Ready Steady Cook or Antiques Roadshow? Would you be all right to repeat the names for me, please, Jeremy? Of course. Martin Roberts and Lucy Alexander have presented which TV show? I don't think it's Ready Steady Cook. Uh, so it's a, a toss up between Homes Under the Hammer and Antiques Roadshow. And something is pulling me towards Homes Under the Hammer. So I'm going to go with that, please, Jeremy. Yeah, you're right. Homes Under the Hammer. OK, Kevin. Denzel Washington was born in which year? 1934, 1954, or 1974? I. I believe he is in, yeah, he's just into his, his early 60s. So that makes it 1954. It is 1954. Well done. Here is your question, Connor. What was the name of the bar worker played by Shelley Long in the TV sitcom Cheers? Carla, 
Diane or Rebecca? Now, I'll honestly say I haven't heard of it, <laughs> which means it's probably going to be going back quite some time. A name that you'd probably associate with a bar work, I don't know That's if that's what I'm going down, but I'm going to go Carla, please, Jeremy. Hey, kids, is he right? No. no, it's Diane. Diane is the answer. Down the middle. In Cheers. You've not seen Cheers? Never. OK, Kevin, your question to take the lead. In which 2015 film does Sir Patrick Stewart play the leader of a gang of neo-Nazis? Is it Green Room, Patterson or Moonlight? Well, I've actually seen this, so no point mucking about. It's a very unusual role for him, and it's in Green Room. Good film? The director has um, done one previously. I thought the first one was actually better than this one, um, which is called Blue Ruin. But uh, this, this is pretty good. Green Room is the right answer. He's in the lead, and that means, Connie, you need to get this one right. Are you still doing your go down the middle rule or not? I should have done it on the last question, shouldn't I? <laughs> <laughs> Here's your question, Connor. Good luck. Which of these films features an angel called Clarence? Connor, is it a matter of life and death? It's a wonderful life, or here comes Mr. Jordan. Again, this was kind of a, a bogey subject. I'm really going to have to take a guess and stick to me and go down the middle for It's a Wonderful Life. <laughs> it's a Wonderful Life is right. Hey, no. You got it. The system worked at last. OK, so level, but Kevin can take the round with this. Chabadi G, Beats and Grinder are characters in which TV comedy series? Chewing gum, people just do nothing, or youngers? I've, I mean, I think, I mean, I've, I've heard the... <laughs> struggling here. I've heard the name Chewing Gum. I don't know Youngers at all. I'm not going to go for either of those I, because I, I just don't know anything about them. My, my, the only thing I can latch on to here, and it may be nothing to do with those names at all, um, is that People Just Do Nothing, I believe, is about a, a sort of crew of DJs in West London from uh, sort of various ethnicities. So I, I'll say People Just Do Nothing. People just do nothing is the right answer, Kevin. Good quizzing. Okay. You've taken it with three out of three in the film and TV rounds. Sorry, Connor, beaten by our egghead. Although the nice down the middle Down one, the middle, it works. It worked. <laughs> it just worked perfectly there. So return to us, please. We'll play on. So as it stands, the drop shots have lost three brains from the final round. The eggheads have still not lost any. One last chance to get an egghead out before the final, and it's politics. <laughs> Who's that? Yeah, I can yeah. take that. <laughs> Stuart, be yeah. Yeah. OK. Against which egghead? Who do you think? Connor, what are your thoughts on that one? Down the middle. <laughs> <laughs> not down the middle. Um, anything else? Can I else? take your Barry? I need a Barry, but that leaves tremendous deep yeah. in the final regardless. Well, we'll just um, go, yeah, Barry. All right, very good. So Stuart from the drop shots is taking on Barry from the egghead. So it's a big moment, this. One last chance to knock out an egghead. Please, for the last time, go to the question room. Politics, Stuart, would you like to go first or second against Barry? I'll go first, please. Here we go. Which of these terms is the name of a school of political theory that suggests all governments are repressive and should be destroyed? Tyranny, anarchy or meritocracy? Um... I believe that is anarchy. Anarchy is correct. Well done. Barry, where was Theresa May born in 1956? Eastbourne, Port Talbot or St Andrews? Oh, well, I don't think she's Welsh or Scottish, so that leads me to Eastbourne. Eastbourne is correct. Good way of working it out. OK, Stuart, your second question. Boutros Boutros Ghali served as Secretary General of the United Nations in which decade? 1970s, 1980s or 1990s? Um, I don't believe it was the 1970s, so that leaves the 1980s and 1990s. Um, I think I'm going to go for the 1990s. You're absolutely right, 1990s. OK, Barry, letters to politicians by which member of the royal family were referred to in the press as the Black Spider Memos? Was it Prince Philip, the Queen or Prince Charles? 
And I've seen these letters and they really do look like black spiders crawling over the page. And they were penned by Prince Charles. Prince Charles is correct to each. The third question's important, Stuart. Here we go. Which left-wing political columnist published his first book, Chavs, The Demonization of the Working Class, in 2011? Was it Steve Richards, Owen Jones, or Andrew Rawnsley? Um, I've not heard of the book. I've heard of some of the answers. So um, I'm going to go with Connor down the middle with Owen Jones. <laughs> <laughs> Owen Jones is right. Yes. Well done, Connor. This is working. This it's system. It's all right, isn't it? It's better than Judas to the right. Amazing. <laughs> all right. You need this to stay in, Barry. Which prime minister made John Prescott a life peer in a dissolution honours list? Gordon Brown, Tony Blair, or David Cameron? I can't believe it was David Cameron. I don't. Oh, how was it? Let me think. How long has he been a lord? Is the question. I think it's fairly recent. More, I think. The more I think about it. I'm going to change my mind. I think John Prescott's only been a lord fairly recently, so I'm going to say David Cameron. David Cameron? No, no, no. Because Cameron's Conservative and Prescott's Labour. Well, I know that, it. but... And it was Gordon Brown. Barry, Didn't know well it. done to our challenger. Stuart, you're in the final round. You've taken him down. You've knocked down an egghead. Barry won't be in the final. If you both return to us, we'll play that final round for £16,000. OK, so things are taking a turn, and this is what we've been playing towards. It is time for the final round, which, as always, is general knowledge. But I'm afraid those of you who lost your head-to-heads won't be allowed to take part in this round. So, Andrew, Martin and Connor from the Drop Shots, but also Barry from the Eggheads, would you please now leave the studio? Scott and Stuart, you're playing to win the Drop Shots £16,000. Dave, Chris, Kevin, Beth, you're playing for something that money can't buy, which is the Egghead's reputation. And to keep this role going, as usual, I will ask each team three questions in turn. This time, they're all general knowledge, and you may confer. So, drop shots, the question is, can your two brains defeat these four? And Scott and Stuart, would you like to go first or second? We would like to go first, please, Jeremy. OK, so good luck. The Zolo in Squintly, or as it is also known, the Mexican hairless, is what type of animal? Horse, dog, or cat? Right, where are we going with this one? <laughs> Zolo in Squintly. I can spell it for you if you want. Yeah, go on. <laughs> X-O-L-O-I-T-Z-C-U-I-N-T-L-I, -I -I, all one word. See, I think the first thing that's jumping out at me is a cat. Yeah, I know there is hairless cats. Yeah, and, so, and it feels, yeah. So that's the only... <laughs> there are hairless cats, yeah, yeah. That's the only way I'm going, but I don't know for sure. So if we're both initially thought uh, cat, yeah, I think then, so. Let, yeah. Let's go with our goal. Uh, could we go for cat, please, Jeremy? Cat is your answer. Let's check with the eggheads. Is cat right? I think it's a dog. 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 Mexican, Mexican hairless. hairless. Oh, it's Quintley. Mexican hairless is a dog. Uh, down the middle. Yeah. Down the middle! <laughs> Corner! <laughs> OK, your question. Eggs. Which of these is considered one of the so-called metaphysical poets? John Donne, John Dryden or John Milton? John Donne. John Donne. John Donne. John Donne. John Donne. Don, 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 yeah. Don, just have a... Just have a... Think a second. Just, just double... Double check. Dunn, so double check. Milton is later. Yeah. Uh, Dryden is later. Yeah, John Donne. John, John Donne. Dunn. We're happy with John Donne? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Our answer is John Donne, please. Do John you know Donne is quite right. So they're ahead. Get this right to catch up. What is the title of the spin-off series from the TV programme The Walking Dead, which started on American television in 2015? Is it Embrace the Walking Dead, Feed the Walking Dead, or Fear the Walking Dead? Are we thinking we've got any kind of idea that we, what we can eliminate? Mm. Not overly. I, the walking dead I don't know. The, the one that's dead. calling out to me is Fear. Yeah. So. You know, if we go for <laughs> yeah. fear and then it's feed. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, that's what's um, calling out, but I don't know. It feels like it fits. Yeah. Shall we just go for it? <laughs> yeah, go for it. <laughs> we'll go for Fear the Walking Dead, please. Fear the Walking Dead is the right answer. 
<laughs> that felt good for me too. <laughs> okay, well done. So one each. Eggheads to take the lead. Bring the noise and don't believe the hype. A singles by which rap group? NWA, Public Enemy or De La Soul? Public Enemy, isn't it, Chris? Is it? Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I yeah. No, you played it. You play it on your radio show, don't you? Not as I know of. <laughs> Not consciously. <laughs> yeah. No, it's not. It's yeah. not done. It's, it's no. definitely. Yeah. I don't believe yeah. the hype. It's, it's public, public enemy. Public yeah. enemy. Yeah. yeah, it is public oh, enemy. Right. As Chris reliably informs me, that is public enemy. Yeah, Chris was nodding away there at the end, as if yeah, he suddenly remembered the song. Public enemy is the right answer. <laughs> Always good to trouble Chris with a bit of rap music. <laughs> okay, so the situation is that they've got two and you've got one. You must get it right to stay in, otherwise they've won. Which of these novels by Ray Bradbury, published in 1962, features the mysterious Mr. Dark as the main antagonist? Now, is this something wicked this way comes? Fahrenheit 451 or Dandelion Wine? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um... I can't even do any kind of process elimination there. What literature... I think that's where we need Martin back, actually, yeah. for that one. Um, OK, so... I've, I'm, I've got nothing to go on. No, I haven't. I'm just... I'm, I'm naturally moving towards something wicked this way comes. Um, I've got no idea whatsoever. Um, what, what are we going for? What do we think? As we don't know, should we stick with the middle? Should we go with the middle? OK, we'll, we'll, we'll go with Connor's theory, um, and we'll go with Fahrenheit 451. OK. Let's see if Martin knows this. Martin, you were the, the literature man, do you know? Uh, we believe it's Fahrenheit 451. Well, it's definitely written by Ray Bradbury, yeah. that book, and Fahrenheit 451 is his most famous book. That's true. But is this the one with Mr Dark in Eggheads? Uh, something Wicked. Something Wicked This Way Comes <laughs> is the answer. Connor's system let you down. Connor. You went down the middle <laughs> and it was the left. Well, we can blame Connor. We can. It's all his fault, yeah. <laughs> Something wicked this way comes as the answer. So we have to say congratulations, Eggheads. You have won. Well, I think we, we tested Connor's system to destruction there. <laughs> we did. And, and it, it was, at times, it? extremely powerful. There's no doubt about that. Connor, don't worry, it's not your fault. <laughs> yeah, they won't say that later. <laughs> <laughs> Commiserations, drop shots. The eggheads have done what comes naturally to them. This winning streak continues. It's looking really impressive, isn't it? It does mean that you're not going home with these £16,000. So the money rolls over to our next show. Eggheads, very well done. Who will beat you? Only lost Barry today. Join us next time to see if a new team of challengers have the brains to finally defeat the Eggheads and stop this run. And if they do, the £17,000 they'll win. Until we quiz again, goodbye.